more of both entertainment and sports yeah. today. Keep God first. Uh, watch me on entertainment and sports today. Stay tuned for entertainment and sports today. A big winner in the tournament. We want this to be fun. We want this is a big night of fun. It's a great evening for people to see. I'm Mel House, and I'm hanging out with Entertainment Today. Thank you, man. Wait, all right. So, congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. You should be. You look absolutely fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm Mel House. I am the writer, creator, executive producer, and I play the mom in a feminist punk rock comedy series called Hot Angry Mom. Hot Angry Mom. Did you guys get that? Okay, so that is just a whole conversation within itself. It is. It Tell is. me, how did you just take the reality of your world and present it to the world? Uh, so it's inspired by my real life family and my own journey to renegotiate my relationship with anger. Around 2017, um, the world is a bit of a trash fire. There's a lot of things making women angry, particularly the Weinstein scandal exploding. Presidents grabbing about uh, bragging about grabbing women by the genitals. I'm a mom in a multiracial family. Uh, lots of things are going on in the world that make us angry. And then also, moms do so much invisible labor. And I was really angry. And I grew up believing that anger was bad, so I would suppress it. Um, and it comes out in very unhealthy ways Absolutely. if you don't have a good relationship. So our series is asking, what does healthy anger look like? And how do we transform it into a source of power? And it's a comedy because my, the character is a hot mess. You know what? But the thing about it is what you just said is life. Yeah. Um, and anger is a part. It is an emotion that it has to be channeled healthy yeah. because you cannot avoid it. Yes. However, once you're acknowledging it, then you know how to navigate it. This is phenomenal. Thank so you. tell us where can we find this film? Um, Please. <laughs> so you can subscribe at hotangrymom.com or follow us at Hot Angry Mom. Where we will have news about upcoming screenings and opportunities to see it. And one of my favorite things about being at Dances with Films was after our screening, a group of women came up and told me how empowered it was to see so much rage from a female character on screen. But also then all these moms came up to start telling me how much they hate their kids. <laughs> Mom rage, it's a real thing. And uh, we have some jokes and stories for you. Alrighty. Well, any words of encouragement? 
Um, to the filmmakers out there, just get up and do it. I It took me a long time to be able to write my own story because it takes some audacity to center yourself in a story and ask people to support you. But as a mom, a caregiver for so many people for so long, when I asked for that support, hundreds of people stepped up. So I am incredibly grateful to my team, the director, Clarissa De Los Reyes, um, all of the badass moms that helped us make Hot Angry Mom, our Seed and Spark backers, to my husband, Vander, and our son, Isaiah, because they made me a mom and gave me a lot of stories to tell. <laughs> and if, okay, perfect. Okay, I'm here with one of my favorite couples. You two are adorable, and to make it in LA where everything is so difficult, but you on Fantasy Island, Oh my God, you are so, I, I thought, how is she gonna pull this off? I mean, really, it's such a uh, iconic yeah. show and she did it, she oh did my it. God. Yes, and you. you on The Rookie. Thank I mean, you. Oh my God. <laughs> thank it's you. Like, it's like really, both of you, when you come on screen, it's, you just own it and that's hard to do because you've done appreciate some great people on the shows. Thank you, but I appreciate that. How do you keep it together and with such a great relationship, mm -hmm. married for so many years yeah. in Hollywood? It's a secret. It's a secret. <laughs> What's well, a secret? No, uh, no support and, and laughter and, yes. and encouragement and respect. You know, it's a, it's like everything. It's a, it's a, it's it's work. It's work. You know, it's been 18 years together. 18 years. 18 years. 18 years yeah. Oh my God! I, two kids, but it's been an incredible journey. Yeah. 18 years. I mean, that's unheard of. Yeah, we, <laughs> I mean, we always have each other's back, so it's good. Yeah. Do you really? How did you meet? Well, how do we meet? That's a long story. Long time ago. We met at an event, a uh, Hollywood event. 20, 20 years ago, and then we were friends for a while, and then... You didn't ask her out for a while? I asked her out, but it, it was the wrong timing, and then uh, years went oh, look by, Look at this we face! You didn't go out with him? Look at him! <laughs> no, I, I did, eventually. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you two are adorable. Thank well, you. Can you do me a big favor? Look into the camera. You say your name first, you say your name, and you ask them to uh, watch you on Entertainment Today. Okay, hola, my name is Rosalind Sanchez. And I'm Eric Winter, and watch us on Entertainment Today. <laughs> One last thing, how difficult is it, because I'm Latin as well, okay. and my guy is also all American, yeah. so how do you deal with her temper? Because we all Latinas have tempers, and we know it. He loves it. Oh, it keeps it fun. It's interesting. You just ride the wave. I like it, see? <laughs> and it's never boring. Never, never boring. Never. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You guys enjoy. Okay, what's your name? Taylor Karen. Aaron Trujillo. Major Dorfman. And what movie are you representing? Uh, we're here with a television pilot. We're here with Overstimulated. Overstimulated? Oh, Overstimulated. Well, what's that about? I'm afraid to ask, but I'm asking anyway. Ask the creator. Okay. I am the creator. <laughs> Hi. Um, Overstimulated is about a neurodivergent woman who moves to New York City, a really overwhelming place, and how she navigates the stress of a recent event in her life, and how it results in her having these dissociative fantasies about life rather than engaging with it, which is a really fun, exciting, uh, cinematic television pilot. It's really fun. Oh. And uh, what part do you play in this? I was the DP on the project. Okay. Yeah. And you are the? I am the writer. The woman that you were just talking about? <laughs> I'm the... Somehow I knew that, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm the writer, director, actor, and editor. Okay. Is that all? <laughs> uh, uh, I gave everyone food, too. Oh, you know what? I was just going to say that. Did you also run for the coffees? No. I sure I sure did. <laughs> and what part did you play? I was a producer and an actor. Okay. Yeah. And so um, the movie sounds great. Thank you. Very, you know, is that, how's it doing so far? Uh, it's doing pretty well. We had our world premiere in Denver at Series Fest, which is the leading television festival. So it was incredible. It was like unlike anything I'd ever really experienced. And the response to it, especially from women, like women who are survivors of assault, women who are neurodivergent, disabled women, it was unbelievable. So it was it was the most powerful thing I could have experienced as a female filmmaker. Uh, aren't you proud of yourself? You wrote it, right? I am proud. <laughs> Aren't you glad guys proud of Absolutely. her? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm very proud. well, thank you so much for writing such a great movie. We're so glad that it's doing so well. I'm sure it's going to do incredibly great, right? Yeah, God's ears, of course. Yeah. 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 Well, your seal of approval. It'll yeah. be. Well, you have you have my seal of approval. <laughs> my name is John O'Sherman. My name is Neil Kelly. And what's the name of your movie? Movie is named Daddy. Daddy. Well, that's short, sweet, and to the point. Absolutely. And is it about a daddy? It's not about a daddy. It's about four guys who want to become daddies. Oh. Yeah. That's that's great. It's yeah. a nice little switch. It's all usually about the girl that wants to be the mommy. No. So it's about four guys who want to become daddies in a sort of dystopian world, and they have to go to a retreat 
to see if they have what it takes to become dads, and then they're sort of put through this test of the mind. And do they find out that they have no business being a dad? Yeah, in so many words, so yes. Many words. Yeah. I guess we just spoiled the movie, but yeah. basically, yeah. <laughs> well, is it a comedy? It is a comedy, yeah. Okay. Dark, dark so they, comedy. Dark okay, comedy, so you yeah. kind of figured that that would be Absolutely. the yeah. way it's going to go. Exactly. You know? Did you write it? We wrote it together, we directed it together, we produced it together, we're in it as well. And, um, yeah. And is it like from personal experience? Uh, no. I mean, we've talked a lot about wanting, you know, we're at the age where our parents were when they had us, so I think we're starting to think about some of these, you know, ideas around being fathers in that next phase and the anxieties around it. You know? And how old are you? I'm, how old do you think I am? <laughs> That's always a... You're in your 20s, obviously. Wow, that's nice. No, I'm 32. That's great. 32? Oh, okay. I'm oh. going to be on as well, yeah. the rest of the day. Oh, well, I'm yeah. I'm in my 20s, wow. Well, Amazing. you look like you're, you're in your 20s. You're a young spirit. Yeah. You've got a young soul. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Well, you're only three years away from being in your 20s. She's yeah, right. well, when you put it that way. Yeah, I guess it's not so nice. <laughs> but three years is like a long time. A lot It's a lifetime. Yeah. yeah. It's a lifetime. Yeah. So at 32, you guys are thinking of being dads, which is great because mm -hmm. I know men that are thinking about it in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 50s. even 60s. Yeah, and yeah. now, thanks to good old Pacino and De Niro, they think they can wait till their That's 70s so and true. 80s. Hey. The originals. The original old dads. Can you imagine Al Pacino and Robert De Niro being your dad when they're like 80? That's pretty awesome. Well, yeah, Pacino is like 82. And, yeah. he and he just became a, a, another a dad once again. Yeah, because so. yeah. then when you're 16, your dad's like 100. Well, your dad's like dead, but he's a legend, Al Pacino. Yeah. <laughs> he's never going to die. Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, you're going to live forever. Exactly, exactly. We'll, we'll end it with that. You're living forever, and it's okay for guys to wait until they're like 80 to have a baby, yeah. but much better to do it when you're 32 like these two. Yeah. Not that they are going to do it anytime soon, I'm sure. Do you even have a girlfriend right now? Absolutely. Oh, and how about you? Yeah. Oh, okay, well then you it could We're be a, it there, could be any day, there, right? One mistake away, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so true. One slip and yeah, you guys Exactly. <laughs> okay, well thank you so much thank for interviewing with me. I'm Jeff Hilliard. I'm here with Entertainment Today. Thank you. Right in that camera. Um, I'm here. I have a, my name's Jeff Hilliard. I'm an artist, and I directed a music video for myself uh, called Abandon. And I'm in the the music block here. Really? My music video is. Really? Okay. So, what can we expect? What type of music is it? This particular you know, genre of music. Uh, this one was like an '80s metal ballad. I do all different genres, and I do different characters. They're all dark satire. All different characters. Uh, mm -hmm. Abandon is about. A 50-year-old guy who still lives at home with his mother is an Uber driver, and he has a one-night stand with a married lady, and he can't quite get over it. Really? Yeah. With an Uber? What? You got Uber in there? Yeah. You have any rights to Uber? Hopefully, they don't come looking for us trying to sue us. Well. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, so now, but what, what gave you the momentum to keep things going? I mean, because a lot of times people get the ideas, but then they're not able to get them off the ground. You know, it's like, okay, I get this idea, but I just kind of get stuck in it, I get lost in it. But how did you move it forward? I'm one of life's winners, and when I set out to do something, I make it happen. And I've had so much success at the film festivals with all my other projects. That keeps me going because I'm trying to. Uh, my sister's husband is very competitive with me, and so I do That's all of this. Right? I do all of this to bum him out. <laughs> for him. That keeps me going. That's your motivation. I think there's some frenemies, right? There's people that do not want to see me continue to succeed. So I got to do it for them to bum them out. Oh my goodness. I right? love that. I love, I mean, you know, if that's what works you and it gets you out of that bed, it gets you going, look at where you are and you're on entertainment today. Okay. Right. I mean, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I do it because I love, I'm passionate about uh, making music and making like really crazy music videos and and sitting in the audience and watching people laugh It's like one of the most beautiful things to experience. Okay last thing any words of encouragement that you would share with our audience viewers that they wasn't able to make it here You should probably give up because it's so hard <laughs> and get and change your dreams to a lower bar so you can actually achieve them Okay. 
Okay. That, so just rework the, pro the, the process, right? <laughs> change your dreams into something productive, like oh. building houses for homeless people or something. <laughs> that is productive for sure. Okay, we are here with the writer and the actor of Off Hollywood and the director of Off Hollywood. Now, what is your name? Tatiana Kim. And yours? Anatolio. So, how did you come up with this great concept? We ourselves are artists. We're, uh, we live here in Hollywood, in the neighborhood, and we were so inspired by, by the neighborhood itself, but also uh, of the unspoken stories that uh, Hollywood doesn't really show. And we wanted to show a different kind of story, take, take a different angle on the immigrant community here in Los Angeles, and specifically Hollywood, which is known to be uh, very densely populated by the Russian-speaking communities from the, from the post-Soviet countries. So we wanted to emphasize the voices of people who live here who has been living here for the past 40 years, really. And how hard it is for them to make a movie. And it's just as hard for people that aren't immigrants. So imagine how hard it is for immigrants. But your, your movie, um, it's great because it really tells people such a, a story of, of all the trouble that it takes you to do this. All, uh, the hardships. And, and, and absolutely. absolutely it does. Yeah, because the magic of our film is how it just resonates with the people, with the immigrants, with, uh, with the artists. And we really was ins we were inspired by our own stories and p stories of our community. And we wanted to show the diversity within our artistic community. And because we're both from Central Asia, we're both from Kazakhstan, our character is an immigrant from Kazakhstan, Russian speaking though. So it is uh, very truly uplifts uh, the stories of immigrants, uplifts the stories of uh, of this neighborhood because the even the last scene of our movie is shot right across the this particular place which is Chinese theater oh how wonderful that's great well good luck to you I'm sure it's gonna do really really well hello my name is Tatiana Kim and I'm director of an of Hollywood the undocumented journey of hope my name is Anatoly <laughs> my name is Anatoly O I am the writer and actor in Off Hollywood, The Undocumented Journey of Hope. Watch us on the Entertainment Today. We're hanging out on the green carpet with Entertainment Today. We are hanging out on the green carpet with Entertainment Today. Excellent. Thank you. Absolutely. My name is Matt T.K. Devine. I'm here with the pilot Who Wants to Be a Millennial, and this is my producing partner. I'm Mark Goodman, and uh, I'm here with Who Wants to Be a Millennial. I was the producer and the editor. All right. Okay, so tell us about what can we expect, what's happening, talk about the good stuff. Oh, the good stuff is we had our world premiere yesterday. It was wonderful. The crowd was great. Uh, we've got a docu-series that's a little bit of a hybrid between documentary and comedy. Okay. It takes a look at millennials who are kind of ordinary people with extraordinary lifestyle hacks, dealing with adulting in like some really innovative ways. And so, unlike a show like Hoarders, we take them and make them champions. Oh, and I love that. I love that. Okay, any, anything you want to add to that? Well, I think uh, it's all about telling a good story, and we managed to do that. Our, our uh, Charlie, w who was our, not our host, Matt's our host, <laughs> but who was our subject, really opened up and was really honest and really told an emotional story. What was that casting process like? Was it difficult? I mean, the millennials, at some point, it was a rivalry at some I mean, think back. I know, I remember. But, you know, they're not going to go anywhere. We're not going to go anywhere. So we're really all in, this, all in this together. So tell me a little bit about how did you guys get to the point where you can find the right fit? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're, we're non-scripted. And so we're finding participants that are living really interesting, innovative lifestyles. And so we've got a guy, for example, that lives in his converted tool shed in Austin, Texas. we got a woman who is a uh, urban forager who feeds her family entirely off of what she picks in the city. we got a guy who's a corporate executive who's a trash scavenger at night so he's a dumpster diver and he makes inventions and all kinds of stuff and he's he's a zero waste and so we have folks that are taking a lot of a lot of different perspectives on a lot of really important issues that we're facing and instead of just complaining about it they're doing something to better the world You're proactive about it oh my how did you find these these characters I mean uh, I mean know, they, they sound like they are notable individuals and their story definitely needs to shine some light on it what was that process like to find them? I mean, were you Instagramming it? Did you did you do a casting call? Or? You know, it just 
I've got a gravity for these kind of stories because I've lived a couple interesting ways myself. I, I lived secretly in my office when I used to work a job 10 years ago. I uh, wrote a blog about that. I uh, was in the tiny house world for a while. And so interesting lifestyles has just been part of the fabric of my being. And so it fascinates me. And so the stories come to me. I've got friends. I've got other folks, followers, who are just really fascinated about this kind of stuff. And they share that stuff with me. And I'm really just thankful for having a community that is interested in this stuff, that is championing these brilliant ideas to move our society forward in a positive way. Because we need that nowadays. We need aspirational. We need positivity. And that's what our production aims to bring to the marketplace. Absolutely. And you know what the thing about it is because there's a lot of noise out there and you have to get through the mess to get to the message. But it sounds like you just cut to the chase. You're right there. Okay. Any words of encouragement? I'll start with you um, and then you. Just any words of encouragement. Let's say we got filmmakers that are inspiring filmmakers and they just need that inspirational push. Go ahead and speak on the subject. I took a few years off of making film. This festival is marking my return to the film world. This project took years to make. It's difficult sometimes to find funding. It's difficult to find motivation. It's difficult to meet your bottom line while you're making film, but you can absolutely do it. That is the absolute antithesis of our project and our work, and the core of my being is that fight. Fight to do what you believe in. Fight to work with your... what. Fight to do what you believe in, fight to work for what you're passionate about, and make this world a better place. And do it with film. If you love film, do it with film. I love it, love it. And I would say, even if you haven't made a film, come to a film festival. It's inspiring. You'll just get motivated to want to do something. And the audiences here are great. I mean, this festival's been so well organized and so much fun. And just inspiring and encouraging. And the audiences get it. They really are fun. So, yeah, I think it's been an amazing experience for us. Now, what is your social media or website? You can see us at whowantstobeamillennial.com or check out divine underscore diaries for my work as a host and the other lifestyle stuff that I do. Exactly. You can look at me at Mark goodmanedit.com and this gentleman is a great editor if anyone needs one I can vouch for him myself we had to do that drop we had to do that drop I got to I got to okay uh, my name is Alexandra Shapanovska and I'm here with my the music video that I directed called A Woman with a Purple Wig which we shot in New York and it's a story about um, Eri Yamamoto who is the lead singer and she's also featured uh, in the film she couldn't make it today she has gigs all the time big gigs all over the world and she, um, it was about her experience during the pandemic when she was attacked and she decided to cover herself up as much as possible with a purple wig and glasses and a mask to find a sort of freedom, a sort of freedom. And that's the journey we follow in the music video. Wow, so how did you meet her in the first place? Ah, oh, she's been my good friend for over a decade. And she teaches everyone in my family piano. So there are about five, four students in my household. And yeah, she's a good friend as well. Where did you meet her? Like, where are you, like, geographically? New York City. Really? Yeah. Could you narrow that down a little bit? That's a pretty big Manhattan, city. Manhattan, in my apartment, <laughs> in my neighbor's apartment. She was with them, friends with them. Okay, I'm <laughs> you sorry. You want to know the details. I'm You're just, tired. I'm busting You're tired. your chops. Yes, I am exhausted. <laughs> I've only been at this for 11 days here. Yeah, now. and like... But um, I, I always just like to know, like, you know, where people came from and, like, what yeah. was the origin of all this kind of stuff and this greatness. So how long has it been since you've been producing, um, you know, this situation? So how long? I've been directing for about 40, uh, 12 years or so, writing, directing. I write and direct mainly. I used to act a lot, but I'm sort of don't do that anymore. Yeah, writing, directing, then producing by default. When you make indie projects, you end up producing how, by default. How did you learn how to direct? I had a mentor who was a very established producer, and we co-directed and co-wrote my first four shorts together in New York, in Paris, and um, that's how I got into directing. And I got into directing because I couldn't really, I had such a strong vision for my scripts, and I got into screenwriting because I was an actor who was unsatisfied with scripts. Really? And yeah. why were you unsatisfied with scripts? <laughs> I know I have I was, great. Do I have great <laughs> questions or what? You're digging I'm just deep. I'm asking you're digging you. Deep. Well, I, all right. So, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. So I was unsatisfied because I think most scripts are actually very poorly written. People don't even know how to sometimes form a sentence. So there's that, and then also that I was, you know, pigeonholed into certain roles which were just 
not right at all, but they were, I don't know, you know, because I'm, I'm Polish, originally from Poland. So, you know, it was like, you know, kind of the the Eastern tart kind of rolls, which is not really... Eastern tart? Tart! Is that what we said? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to ask you what that means. <laughs> I, I don't know. Because... Well, like, like, you know, a, a prostitute, for example. Okay. You know, and like, this isn't... You can see my essence. It would be very hard for me to play parts like that. It doesn't really go naturally with my... You know, it'd be very hard. So I got, was getting these kinds of parts which are not at all fitting and not at all, you know, always the same. And so I wanted something, you know, a little different and that was fitting, I thought, more my essence and my style and, you know, what I want to express in the world. Okay, fine. So yeah. who was your editor? For the music video, I edited. You did? Yeah. How did you learn how to edit? Well, I made, I've made a feature before, and I've made other films before, and so as a director, you sit with your editor. I sit with my editor day to day to day, and we adjust together, and so you learn the process just by... And editing is another form of writing, so if you're a good writer, you usually are a good editor. That's a bold statement, but you're, you're absolutely right. I agree with you 100%. You know? Is it bold? Am I going to get in trouble? No, not at all. <laughs> All right, so listen, I'm going to fill you in on a little bit of a secret. Yeah? I'm an editor. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I love to do that. It's I love right. to ask it's, people. It's like writing. Yeah, that's You're right. You're rewriting the story. That's right. Yeah, so... And you know what? One, one of the greatest phrases that I ever heard was, the last draft of the script is only the first cut of the movie. Exactly. Because exactly. we have to comb things out yes. and everything else, you know. And you're restructuring and rewrite, rewriting the climaxes, the you know, the, the whole thing. You're doing right. Yeah. So is there a movie trailer for this movie? Yeah, there's a trailer. This is a this is a music video. So there is a trailer on the website and it'll be released on Aria Mamoto's uh, YouTube channel when we finish kind of the festival run. Alright, so you wanna give me a shout out for that YouTube channel. Like what's oh, the gosh, handle? I don't know. Okay, I don't, fine. Aria Mamoto Jazz. I think it's Ari Yamamoto Jazz. Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah she, was, she's a Japanese jazz musician. Okay. So I pretty was, easy to find. I was just trying to do my best. I know. And I know. You're the best. How about this then? You yes. want to spell out her name for me? Yes. E R I for Ari, and then Yamamoto. Y A M O T O. Yamamoto. No. Y A M A M O T O. I will edit it. <laughs> Now listen to me. I okay, will edit, edit that. it so you know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for the nice interview. That was Thank fun. Thank you so much. All right, Have we'll see night. you around. Thank you. So we're here with the cast from Foil, and it's a new movie. It's a comedy. Is it comedy? At, it's a comedy. <laughs> it's a comedy. Yes, Sci-fi buddy comedy. Yeah. For a minute there, I thought. I wasn't Are you sure. kidding? Because they told they told me what the plot was. I'm like, that's a, a drama. Are you kidding me? No. Okay. Now they're all in the movie, and this gentleman here is the director, co-writer, co-star. And he is also a co-writer and a co-star. Yes. So, tell me a little bit about the movie again. I already know, but so that you guys can find out about it. Sure. So yes, it's a sci-fi buddy comedy. Devin and I are old high school buddies that meet up for our 10-year reunion. We decide, F it, we're going to go out to the desert, reconnect. When we get out there, we find a piece of UFO scrap foil that potentially is from a UFO. He believes it's real, I believe it's fake. It drives us apart, leading us right into the snare of these two weirdos in the desert, and chaos ensues. And... For the auditions for these two, because mm -hmm. he's the one that said weirdos, okay. Uh, <laughs> so are these your buddies already, or did you have a big casting? I would say lack thereof of, of, uh, of auditions. These two fellas were in two films with me. We're all, we all hail from Texas, uh, Austin, Texas. So I was in two features, one Lovers of Hate with this fellow, Chris Dubeck. He was the star in 2010. Then I was in Love and Air Sex with Brian McGuire. We were stoner roommates in 2013. And I've just been buddies with them ever since. Okay. Yeah, a lot of love, love and both. A lot of love, love yeah. A lot of love. So um, uh, he said it did really well on Friday night. And uh, so you should go watch it. Again, simple title, Foil. Foil. Okay. Now, uh, what's your name? Chris. Brian McGuire. Zach Green. Devin O'Rourke. And so you can watch them all on Entertainment Today. Love it. Not tonight, today.
Exactly. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thanks. I'm Justin Wested. And I'm April Yanko. We're here with Butt Stuff. Watch us on Entertainment Today. So what's your name? My name is April Yanko. And, and I'm you? Justin Wested. And what's the name of your movie? Uh, the movie that we're here with, which is mostly hair, but we're uh, with Butt Stuff. Butt Stuff? That is correct, yes. <laughs> um, I, I hate to ask, but I've been asking everybody what is the movie about, so... Uh, the movie is about a man's sentient sex toy, Cassie, we named her, uh, gets jealous of his relationship with a human woman. It is a horror rom-com that played in the Midnight Shorts. Wow. Yes. And how has it been doing lately? I mean, is it... Is it uh, how, how is the audience yeah, reacting? Yeah. Uh, the audience is reacting really well. We've got a lot of good, uh, a lot of good vibes, a lot of positive words. It's definitely something that has caught people's eye. So we tell them we're with butt stuff, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I saw that." Like the name stuck out to me because it grabs attention, which is what we want. So that's yeah, the name <laughs> definitely grabs attention. No <laughs> doubt about that. Well, well, I'm glad it's doing well. Congratulations. So we're here with the cast of the girl in the back seat. And we want you to watch the girl in the back seat and also watch them on Entertainment, Entertainment Today. Today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And thank, thank you all so of you. Much, you were great. Thank you so thank much. You. Good luck with your movie. Thank thank you. You. Hi, I'm Kika Magalhães. I'm Chris Marone. I'm Nick Laurent. Helen Day. Mike Lynch, producer. And what is the name of your movie? It's The Girl in the Back Seat. The Girl in the Back Seat. Uh, so is this about... A girl in a back seat? You yeah. could say that, yeah. It's a huh. human trafficking story. Uh, oh. it, it's a harrowing story. It's a thriller drama that follows uh, Kika's character oh, here. Yeah, you want to explain a little bit about how the story started? Uh, well, do we want to keep talking about the... the it's, yeah. Sure, you really... You'd okay, sorry, story. yeah, so I'll explain the story. It's a thriller <laughs> drama called A Girl in the Back Seat. It's a story about a young immigrant who's catfished after using a dating app, and her kidnapper takes her on an involuntary road trip through the vast and mysterious landscape of a worldwide human trafficking ring. Oh, that is a great story. And you know what's really good about that is that it's not just entertaining, but it's really informative because a lot of women think that, hey, he sounds great and how, how bad could that be? And it could be really horrific. And women don't realize this. They're talking to a total stranger. Yes, and it's, it's all inspired by true events. Um, oh, it is? On, oh, my God. Based on things that actually happen. So it does tread that beautiful line of being a really entertaining, gripping story that people are going to love as a piece of entertainment, but it's also super educational. Right, because no matter how great he sounds... You know, well, we soon learned that he's not so great. Yeah, it's uh, very apparent after you start watching. Spoiler alert, sorry. But uh, yeah, no, th th we hope people walk away with this movie with just a little bit more of an awareness of like that there's a real life horror out there. Many has many faces, but human trafficking's out there. It's not a paranormal ghost. It's not an alien coming down. This is real and it's terrifying. And a lot of women, they're lonely, and even if they're beautiful and young and gorgeous, they can still be lonely. They want that love of their life, and they really fall for, yeah. you know, someone that really knows how to talk. A friend of mine just got an email the other day. I don't even know how they got her email, but he's, he's already proposing marriage to someone he has never met. And a red flag, it was one humongous red flag. That's a no, that's an absolute no. Do not do it. She forwarded it to me and she said, oh, look, you know, he thinks of my picture so fabulous and my, you know, and my body. And I'm like, oh, dear Lord, are you not seeing this? Well, and they don't. Yeah, there definitely is that theme of like the internet is a huge scary place and you don't really know who someone is on there. You right. know, if you just meet through the internet. And that's the case with Sophia and how she meets Ryan's character. And... I, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, layers to those two characters as we unravel throughout the film, and we hope that, you know, it isn't just a story of a kidnapper and kidnappy, you know, and it's, it's the story of two people who are trapped, you know, so. Now, um, has, how has it been received? at the film festival. So far people have been walking away saying that was really messed up but it stuck with me and you know right. the it stuck with me part is really what makes us all feel like this was all worth it you know so. to put three years into so. Well you want a movie that's you know sticks with you I mean yes. come on I watch a zillion and like everybody else a zillion movies on Netflix and and Prime and uh, Hulu and everything else and, and and then a week later I'm like did I see this movie or not? <laughs> you know, but there's certain movies that you know you saw them. It does stick with you, yeah. so it's great if it has that kind of a reaction. And what else was also amazing too at our world premiere was to be there with a live audience and see oh, yeah. them reacting and responding. We've seen this film so many times as the filmmakers. How many times? 
Uh, I would say at least 20. At least 20 all the way through. I'm going to say 200 maybe. Oh, dear Lord. But when you sit in the edit room, you know, it's as many. 20 all the way through. So, come on. I'm, I'm just saying, it's like that's a lot of times to watch something. But to be there with a live audience in a packed house here during Dances with Films and to get those visceral reactions was so rewarding for all this work that we've all put into it. Everybody from pre-production, principal photography to post-production. It, it was just a, a mag magnificent experience. Well, I'm so glad that you guys really enjoyed it. Hi, Doug. Nice to meet you. I'm very happy to be here. My name is Rosa Frausto. I am in a short film titled Esperanza, and I'm just so excited to be here tonight. That's awesome. So, like, where did you come from? Like, where are you born originally? I am born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. So, shout out to my people in Chicago. I'm here in L.A. and living the life and in my journey as an actor. That's awesome. How did you get involved in this project? I got involved in this project because I auditioned for a film, a short film, and after having been seen with 50, 50 women, the director, Sruti Parekh, she saw me and she had an image and she's like, I want you, you're the one. And I'm just very happy to be, have been part of this short film that's been in many festivals in Japan in New York, in Manhattan. Oh my goodness. And yes. So um, can you tell me a little bit about your role? Like who did you get cast as and tell me about your character. Yes. So the character that I play, her name is Estrella. And Estrella is leaving America with her partner Marisol, which is my co-star Vico Ortiz. And they're trying to leave America to travel back to a better country which is Canada and they meet a taxi driver who's from India who was having some of his problems and we're connected to him by having him take us to the border of Canada and some unfortunate events occur to us thinking that he's gonna help us but some things don't happen the way you expect. Okay, outstanding. Well, thank you very much. That was a great interview. I really yes, appreciate your time. So and I will see you around. And you will. You will. Enjoy the show. <laughs> hey guys, we're hanging out with Entertainment Today. Thank you. All right, guys, I am with Entertainment Today, and this is a big deal. So I want you to go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us why you're here today. Uh, hi, my name is Chris Leary. I wrote and directed Footnotes. Hi, my name is Victor Inglis, and I was a cinematographer for Footnotes. Hi, my name is Shari Mahale, and I was the actor and producer for Footnotes. Excellent. So, tell us about a little bit about the movie. What can we expect? Yeah, so it's a feature film. Uh, it's a little bit of what we called an anti-rom-com. So myself and Sherry play the two leads. Uh, two characters caught in quarantine, start spending every day together to pass some time. And uh, kind of takes a traditional rom-com angle until the midpoint, and there's a little bit of a twist. Really? So that's exciting. So who was the brainchild behind this movie? Myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, but it was heavily inspired by myself and Sherry's friendship. So we've been, we were friends for a while, both actors. So wrote it with her in mind. A lot of like conversations we would have over Zoom during COVID kind of started the, the basis of the characters. That is absolutely awesome. Okay, so now was this something that you just decided I'm going to do or you always just knew I was going to be a filmmaker? Tell me about that journey a little bit. Um, yeah, I was a child actor and then went to film school for college. So always, always been the plan. Always growing up around sets and seeing all these adults be creative was always very cool to me. Um, so yeah, always the plan, but you know, didn't know what my first feature would look like, but very, very happy it was this. And what about yourself? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was making short films since I was like 13 years old with my brother, and I was just constantly... 13, yeah. get out of here! Yeah. And then I was in TV production in high school for every year during lunch, and we would just make constantly make movies, and I fell in love with it. And then eventually, I was like, I could probably make a living out of it, potentially. And then I came out here, and here we are. Here we yeah. go, and now you beautiful! I grew up being a dancer, um, and I actually didn't pursue acting until maybe closer to four or five years ago. I was studying business before that, and I thought if I did business and entertainment, that'd be good enough. But I think I, you know, I, I caught the acting bug and I couldn't shake it. So I'm here today. So when is the movie going to be released? Tell me our, where you are in that process. Um, we're dealing with distributors now, so looking for, you know, to sell it, getting it out to different people. Um, we're hoping for something in the fall. So yeah. Okay, and then as far as like, what 
can people really expect? Is it going to be a thriller? Is it going to be drama? Is it going to be suspense? I mean, come on, you got to give me something. You got me excited now. So you got to be able to give me a little something. Uh, well, we had a great audience reaction. It's a very funny movie. It's got a lot of heart. It's got a lot of soul to it. I think you're going to go in expecting a rom-com, and you're going to come out feeling a lot... Another guy told me he had a dream about the movie the next day. He liked it so much. Get out of here. Still thinking, still thinking about it, you know? But well, that means they're on, it's on their mind. Okay, so how are we trending? What are we going to do? What's social media? Who want to talk to me? Give me a social media handle. Sure. Um, Footnotes Movie is the social media handle for it. So follow us and uh, stay, stay up to date with our content. Okay, so uh, tell me the name of your uh, movie. Uh, my movie is na uh, called Hawaii. Okay, and what is your name? Walid Badur. Okay, try, try to look in the camera. Uh, okay, okay. Sorry. Now, tell me a little bit about your movie. Uh, my movie is about Farida, who uh, takes her friend to go to a late night restaurant, and she witnesses uh, a, se a sexual harassed incident, Ooh. and she tries to interfere, face the uh, harasser, but things doesn't go the way that she wanted. Oh, so things go bad. Yeah. And it's, so this is a drama. Yeah, it is a drama. It's a short film drama. Uh, it's about like the sexual harassment and how different women act differently in the situation. So in a way, it's not just entertaining, but in a way, it also is um, informative to give you an idea of what not to do. Uh, yes, and but I, I I tried to make it like as a story, and like people just like uh, get out of the movie, uh, finish the movie, watch it, and judge for themselves what should they act in a situation like this. So you are the writer, director, no, oh no. I'm okay. just the director. Director, yes. okay. And are you in the movie as well? No, okay. but I had, uh, the writer is a female friend of mine. She was What, what is her school. name? Uh, Jessica Isabella. Okay, and uh, what is the name of the um, producer? Uh, the producer is Ahmed Berberi. Okay, and, and the name of the lead? Um, there's two leads, uh, uh, Tatiana Randoros, and uh, Mona Suelen. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. So really a pleasure. Thank We're you. hanging out with, with entertainment, entertainment today. today. Thank you. Oh, thank you so <laughs> All right. Okay. All righty. Okay, guys. So, listen, I'm super excited. Yes. My name is yeah. Tressa. I'm one of the hosts for Entertainment Today. Awesome. And we're here to help you guys celebrate and get your name and your message out Wonderful. there to Wonderful. the world. <laughs> so, introduce yourself and tell us why you're here. Can we get the lady go first, yes, please? Yes, please. please. <laughs> Hi, I'm Isabel Van. I'm Isabel Van Vliet. I'm here representing Father Figures Film. I acted in this film, directed by Alessandra Kile. All right, so now we got the big man, the boss man, the director. Go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us why you're here. Hey, my name is Alessandro Kile. I'm the director and writer of Father Figures. And it has been awesome to be here at Dances with Films. Okay, now this is a big deal. Yeah. Because of the fact that this is all about you, I'm sure it was a lot of work to get yes. to this point. Yes. Okay, so tell us briefly about your journey and how you got to the point where you said, this is the movie, this is the film, yeah. this is what I want to make, yeah. this is what I want the world to see, mm -hmm. this is what my version is. Yes. Well, the film's about a dad for hire for young men who've lost their dads, and it came during COVID. I was separated from my father for over a year. I got married in that time, he wasn't able to celebrate, and I thought about what would I do to be able to fill that void. So I came up with this film about young men who hired this father for hire through major life events. And we filmed in Maine, it was the middle of winter, it was seven degrees in January. And, you know, despite all the hardships that come with shooting in the middle of winter, we had a fantastic crew, it was an excellent experience with great actors. I'm really, really glad we pulled it off. What made you film all the way in Maine? We, I'm like, we got such beautiful weather here in California. What is the deal with that? We live in Maine. We actually both live in Maine right now. That's We're out here. both look so preserved. Yes, yes, that's exactly it. <laughs> okay, all yeah. right. So, okay, so Maine, how do we go from Maine to Hollywood? You know, it's a whole lot of working on getting the film as good as it can be and just submitting to the best festivals in the world. Dances with Film saw something that they liked in Father Figures. And, you know, it, 12 hours on a plane later, we're here, and I, I couldn't be happier about it. And you know what? It is about the thing. It's so much information out there. It's so much noise. Yeah. It's so busy to the point that we can't even find the good stuff, the yeah. message. You got to get past the mess to get yeah. to the messages. So with that being said, your, your, it sounds like your movie is more based off a of heartfelt inspiration. Yes. It's to help be a part of the solution. Mm -hmm. So because you went through your story, you obviously know that other people are going through their story as well. Yeah. But what made you get to the point where you said, I know that I can do this? I think it's always a leap of faith. You know, I've made films for years. I used to work with a bunch of companies out here in L.A. before moving to Maine. And that's kind of where I cut my teeth and figured out how to make this whole thing work. Right. 
but it, it really took that personal push of the experience through COVID with my own father to realize this is a story I need to tell right now. Absolutely. Now with you, tell me a little bit about your role that you play. So I'm an actor in um, Father Figures, and um, I play one of the wives of one of the sons um, that Harold, the, um, the main figure of the film, is hired for, to be there for, and um, I also was a music supervisor for the film, so that helped lay out the, the tone of the film and um, overall got the result that we all wanted. Absolutely. Yeah. And what is it on this carpet today, on this, in this very moment, this is your moment, what is the message that you want to share with the world right now? If you have your parents still here and there's something you haven't said to them that you want to tell them, don't wait. Get the word out now. That is very, very wise. And what about yourself? Agreed. Hug them, tell them you love them, and always try to give them a call whenever, if you're away. I know, get off yeah. the phone for a Pick minute up. and call your parents. That's what you need to do. Just stop TikToking for five minutes. Let them know you love them. Yeah. Well, I hope and I wish you guys all the best. Hopefully next year we'll see you at one of the Academy Awards. Oh, that would be lovely. Uh, all right, so, looking matching. I know, right? You know what's so funny is that I have a producer at work. And every time I wear this, he goes, Go! <laughs> His name's Eric Mazur. Anyway, so, um, all right, fine. <laughs> I've had people walking in front of the camera all, like for a week now, you know. It's all good, man. Okay, so my name, my name is Doug Nolan. I'm with Entertainment Today. Could you all do me a favor and just introduce yourselves and tell me, you know, like, it's a beautiful girl. She can walk in front of the camera. <laughs> and tell me what you're doing here tonight. All right, fine. So go for it. Uh, well, tonight, uh, Black Maria is here for the award ceremony that uh, DWF, DWF is having. Uh, my name is Casey Merrill, and I'm the co-executive producer, the uh, special effect, or I'm sorry, visual effects supervisor, the props master, the colorist, the titleist. And Damn. I've done a little bit for uh, social you're marketing. You're the colorist? Yep. That's a heavy responsibility. <laughs> I'm a colorist too, that's yeah, why I said it that. It takes a long time. <laughs> All right, fine. So tell me who you are and what brought you here. Uh, Brad Frizzell, I'm the producer on Black Maria. Uh, we had a pilot that premiered yesterday. Um, and uh, yeah, we're here now to, to kind of walk this carpet and uh, you know attend the award ceremony afterwards. So. I don't blame you. <laughs> oh yeah, it's just a lot of fun right, so here. Give me your life story. Oh, I love it. So my name is Marcus W. Albino. I'm the writer director of Black Maria, which is a pilot here premiering at the Dances with Films Festival. And uh, we just had our big premiere last night, July 1st, and now we're checking everything out before the big awards ceremony tonight at 9:30. Fair enough. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> so tell me who you are. Right on. I'm Justin Arbabi. I'm the co-executive producer and editor of Black Maria. Uh, yeah, we're here for closing ceremony and uh, for the awards. We'll see what happens. We had a great premiere last night. It was a blast. Dancing with the Films has been amazing hosts. Thanks for having us. All right, so normally I would go back, you know, this direction, but you said a magic word there, and you said you're the editor. Let's hear about being the editor. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's... Uh, it's both easier and harder to edit when you have performances that are as dialed as we had, you know, because you could theoretically just kind of throw anything in the timeline and it's going to work because these actors are so, you know, in tune with the script and with, with their characters that it just worked, right? But then again, we had a wealth of material to work with, so it was kind of like this trial of all these different variations of, let's see, this reaction with that you know, wide shot, and there was just so much amazing material to work with, we couldn't help but check every single possible variability with it, and, uh, you know, in a way that's challenging in itself, right, it takes time, but at the end of the day, we found the perfect combo, and uh, working with Brad and Marcus especially, you know, these guys are meticulous, and uh, have an amazing film IQ, and, uh, you know, I uh, was in very good hands as an editor, I, I found out that I can be wrong sometimes after working with these guys. <laughs> I seriously doubt that. But anyway, so um, how did you get involved in this project? Well, um, shoot, Mark, Brad, and I have been buddies since uh, shoot. His dad? Is that what you said? In 2005, 10? 10. When did I go up there? I went there up there in 09. Yeah. And uh, we got to know each other through the film industry out there and through school. And we started. Out where? I'm sorry, I missed sorry, that. I missed that. San Francisco. 
Okay, fine. Yep, up at the Academy like, of Arts. Specifically, San we're in San Francisco because I love that city. Well, it's only seven by seven, so there's not much in downtown. San Fran is only seven by seven miles. Jesus. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's <laughs> tiny. All right, but I mean, dive directly into exactly what part of San Francisco. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, these guys lived literally right behind the Ghirardelli sign. That's, I think that's the first place we met. And uh, then it was the rooftop for a long time. Um, but uh, we were going to school downtown. Oh, yeah, we met up near the Tenderloin. Near the Tenderloin. What Tenderloin? San Francisco. It's a neighborhood in San Francisco, the Tenderloin. Oh, okay. I guess I don't know it that well. <laughs> My friend, uh, her name is Cassandra Garcia. She graduated from um, Cal State East Bay okay. just recently. And so I took the BART all the way up and down there, you know, and we were, we were taking Uber drives. And I, I took the, you know, the San Francisco Bay um, ferry boat over to Sausalito, and that was really, really cool and fun. But are you from there originally? Uh, no, I'm from Virginia originally. Moved out to San Francisco in 2010. Spent about five years there before moving down to LA. Cool. So where in Virginia? Uh, I'm from southeastern Virginia. So I grew up between Suffolk and Virginia Beach, which is the southeastern corner of the state. Right. Is that anywhere near? Um, oh God, what was I gonna say? <sighs> Newport News. Uh, actually, yes. Yeah, Newport News would be right over the bridge for me. They're, a, they're part of the uh, peninsula, and uh, I'm part of the, uh, I don't know, southern part of that. So right across the bridge from the Newport Okay, News. fine. My uncle Jerry is from there. He, he is not from there, but he moved there, you know. So that's why I was trying to give a shout-out to my uncle Jerry. Was he a military guy? Uh, I can't remember. My dad was. That's his brother. But, There's a shipyard uh, out there. So yeah, yeah, that's right. I had a friend of mine, his name is Jim Marshall, and he went AWOL from there. Oh. <laughs> Do you know my buddy uh, Brad? No, I don't know. Not Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. He had a long night. You guys are uh, you're such a fun interview. I don't want it to end. You know, this is good stuff. So, um, all right, can you tell me a little bit about, like, what high school did you go to? Oh, wow, these wow, these are deep cuts. Uh, I went to Nansen River High School in Suffolk, Virginia. Um, uh, graduated in 2003. So if, if any of you are watching, uh, we have our 20-year high school reunion coming up this fall. There you go. That's what I'm after. Your friend's going to love this. If you want, you know, you can tag people, and I'll tag them, and they'll get to see your whole entire interview, you know. Whatever. Okay. So where did you come from originally? Oh, my God. I don't know anymore. I've lost track of time. Where were you born? I was born under a small oak tree just outside of a farm. <laughs> Somewhere south of New Hampshire, but I can't be exactly sure. My, mo sure? my mother never told me exactly. So she wanted the spot to be the secret just for us. Do you know about the Appalachian Trail? Oh my god. Well, I mean, once you've hiked it, how can you not know it? I just learned about it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's beautiful. Though I prefer Kilimanjaro or the Rockies myself. <laughs> All right, editor guy, I got to wrap this up. Yeah, these up, these guys are like, you know, beating me up over here. Yeah. You know, so where did you learn how to edit? It's all trial and error, man. You know, these days, all the information's out there, YouTube. I'm very self-taught. Um, you know, I, I did some acting classes here and there. I worked on a lot of productions, uh, you know, so I learned the ins and outs of filmmaking through that, uh, which, of course, translates to a degree with the editing. You know, you want to understand... All the various. Do you, have a Do you have a degree in editing? Very much not a degree in a bona fide sense, but uh, if you ask my. It's a very good point. I mean, entertainment and sports today.